Okay, in this guide, we're going to use Godot 4 to create a basic third person character controller. So, what we need to do is we're just going to first set up a just a flat plane that our character can move around on. So, I'm just going to throw in a 3D node. Let's call it environment. We're going to just add a static body. Or actually, we'll just add, do it nicely. Let's do another node 3D. We're going to call this one floor, not floor. We'll add a child to that, which is going to be a static body, so that's going to have be solid. We'll also add a mesh instance to that. Now, on our mesh instance, we're just going to put a new plane mesh on, so that's giving us our basic 3D environment. Our static body. What we then want to do is add a child node to that, which is going to have a collision shape on it. And on that, I am just going to do a world boundary shape for this example. We can see that's quite big. Remember, when changing the sizes of these, we want to modify our planes of our world boundary. And then we're just going to go and modify the size of our mesh just to be, say, say 20 meters. Let's do it by 10. No, it's not quite covering the whole area. And we'll just save that scene. Let's call this, make sure, good practice. Uh, let's call this levels. And... Call that one test environment because this is what this is going to be used for. Okay, so we've got our basic environment. What I'm actually also going to add is a camera 3D onto this, and we'll just pull that back, pivot it up. Let's look at the preview mode. We can see most things there. What you might want is say set it up so you've got two viewports. And now we can actually see what the camera is saying when I move it around. So I can sort of go that, bring that up, pull it up, pivot down, and we can just, well, it's quite useful, control one and control two, so we can just sort of pivot between what we're sort of needing to see. So, yep, so we've got an environment that we can work with. So I'm just going to save that. That's our first okay, scene. Now, what we're going to do is create another character. So we're going to go scene, new scene. This time it's going to be an other node. And we're going to use a character body 3D. And let's call this player. Now, we've got the little exclamation mark saying there's an error, saying it doesn't have a collision shape. So let's go and add that on. Adding our collision shape, let's also go and add, you know, let's call it, put a node 3D on this. And let's go character model, because obviously we could import other meshes that may be designed in Blockbench. But in this case, I am just going to do make one just very quickly out of existing meshes. So I'm going to have a body. And we will also just have a mesh, another mesh instance. Another one called visor. And what I'm going to add is a capsule mesh to the body. And I'm just going to add a box mesh. And we're just going to resize this. Just so it sort of looks sort of out on the front. And then we'll move it. Position it just so it's sort of forwards, just so we can tell which direction is facing the front. What we might also want to do is go and add some materials to that. So we're just going to override the default materials, create a new standard material, open that up by clicking on it. 
go to Alberto and let's just make that visor black. And we'll do the same for the body. So new surface mesh material. Obviously, if we do say something like block bench, we're not gonna have to worry about this because we've imported those details in ourselves. And give us a nice sort of nice color that's gonna stand out. Obviously, we can play around with the transparency if we want to. We have to change the alpha here, but then also go in and modify the transparency on the character. But I'm going to leave that off for now. So there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do here. Let's actually make it in metallic efforts. And we're just going to save that. I'm not going to save that in the level section. I'm going to make another folder. And let's call this player. Because I'm going to keep everything to do with the player in this player folder just so I can compartmentalize and make things easy to work. Now, collision shape, we haven't actually added that yet, so I'm just going to add a new capsule shape, and we can sort of see that it's actually in the same position as this one here. If we wanted to actually make that collision bigger, we go into the capsule shape and modify it here. Do not change the scale, because that can cause our collisions not to work as nice as we'd hoped. So, I'm actually just going to make it actually just a little bit smaller than the actual body, just so we can actually clip inside a little bit. Now, we've got our little our player there. What I'm then going to do is I'm actually just going to attach a script, and I'm just going to use the built-in template, the character body 3D, because that's actually got bunch of code. So we've got our speed, it's got a jump velocity, we're taking the gravity from our project settings. It checks if we're on the floor. So if we're basically falling or not touching the ground, we take the gravity, multiply it by delta, which is the number of frames that have passed since this function was last run. So the physics process is the physics engine that's running over and over and it just subtracts that from the current Y velocity. So it's moving down. If UI accept and is on floor, so UI accept is basically sort of our jump. We're gonna modify these and put our own bits later. Jump velocity, modify it so it jumps, it goes, moves to that sort of speed. Input direction, so we're gonna read in the inputs, left, right, up, and down. So there's the arrow keys. Save them to a variable called input direct there. And we're going to get, create basically vector three, which has our direction. So the transform of our player dot basis is vector three x. We don't move it on the y axis, but our y input, our forward and back, we use on the z because z, if you're looking at game, is this blue axis here. So we're moving along this axis. We don't want it moving on the y. And normalized just sort of. If you think of the maths, if it goes into the, a corner, like here, it's putting the value all the way out. So we're actually just sort of tapering it off. So it's always the same distance. So we actually move the same speed forward back in the angles, because if we put forward and left, we'd actually be moving faster. We update the direction times the speed. So if, we, if direction actually exists, we do that. Otherwise, we're going to just move it towards this location. And move and slide is what actually goes and runs it. So I've got that saved. I'm just going to go to my test environment. I'm actually going to configure this. So I'm going to go project settings. And the scene I want to run is my main scene is going to be this test environment scene. So I can go and change any of these I want. And that means when I press F5, it'll run it. If I press F6, it'll just run whatever scene I've actually got selected. So if I press F6 on the player one, we get nothing because the camera's not there. So I'm going to press F5. And we've got our environment. It's pretty dark at the moment. And we didn't have a player on there. So let's actually go and take our player object, or our player scene, and put them into our environment. He's down there. Let's drag him up and press F5 to run it. 
and it's still nice and dark. So what we're actually going to do is let's go and put a light on here. So we can add that to the environment by adding a child node, search for light. There are a few different types of lights. Directional is sort of like a sun. Omnidirectional is like a light bulb or candle. And spotlights and so on. So I am just going to put in just a directional light because that's good for like scene lighting. Now it's dragged it in. But if we go and move over to the light, we can see the arrow is facing over to the right. So that is the direction this light is shining. So what I'm actually going to do is we can get rotate it. And if we sort of pivot down, we can see it sort of changes the light. So let's go and have a look. And now we're going to run that scene. Got a bit more lighting. And if I use the arrow keys, my character is moving around. Okay, so that is how we can get a basic character controller. Very basic sort of third, third person movement, but the camera's not attached. If we actually want the camera to follow our player, all we can do, go onto our player, let's go and add a child node, let's add a camera 3D onto this. And what we are going to do is let's just use that control 2 so we can look at it again. So we can see our camera. Looking down on our player, and let now if we save that, jump back to our test environment, we press F5, still looking over the top. That's because this camera is still enabled. So let's go and turn that camera off. Oops, sorry, that's not turning camera off. There should be a disabled option. So if we want to force it to use a different camera, what I'm going to do is jump into the player scene, select the camera, and I'm going to enable that to be current. We can obviously change around it with that field of view and things like that with that camera. So now save that, jump back into my test environment, press F5 to preview it, and now we can sort of see it is following. Note at the moment we haven't got any mouse control for changing the look, but we'll get to those at a later point. So there is our very basic character movement. We've got our world environment and using that boundary we've got a nice ground. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that.